Well, good morning. This is Pastor Marvin Osborne with First Baptist Church of Birmingham, Ohio. And I hope you're well today. It's a nice, brisk, uh, cold day here in Ohio as I tape this. And hope you're nice and warm where you're at. Glad you can be with us today, whether you're watching this on a Saturday night or a Sunday morning. We're certainly glad that you are a part of the First Baptist family. And um, if I can ever do anything, you let me know. Here we are. We're still in our study on on God, and uh, we're going to talk today about uh, how God is faithful, that God is faithful. Look what it says in Lamentations 3, 22 through 25. It says, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because of his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore, Will I hope in him? The Lord is good unto them that wait on him. To the, to the soul that seeketh him. Lamentations 3, 22 through 25. You know what? We live in a world where uh, where we cannot trust uh, very many people. Isn't that the truth? Who can we really trust? Can we trust those people that are in the White House? Can we trust those people who are in the governor's mansion? Can we trust those people who speak from the pulpits? Can we speak? Can we trust our spouse? Can we trust our children? Can we trust our employers? You know, the fact this is very, very few people here on planet Earth that we can truly trust. And um, but we know that there's a God in heaven whom we can trust. He says, "Great is Thy faithfulness." The old hymn comes from that song, "Great is Thy faithfulness." John fourteen six says that He is the truth. John eight thirty seven says, uh, "To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. And every one that is of the truth heareth my voice." You know the Bible has several words for the word truth. Uh, the Hebrew word is the word emet, e m e t, and it means stability or firmness or certainty. It's uh, we get the word amen in the English from the word emit, E-M-E-T. And uh, it means truth. It means, yes, absolutely true. It is certain. So when you hear people in the church uh, church that says uh, amen, they're saying, hey, that's truth. I believe that. I believe that. That is certain. And uh, therefore, when we say that God is faithful, we're saying that God is true, that we can trust him. To say God is true is the same as saying that God is faithful, that we can trust him. Uh, here is a simple definition. Uh, God's faithfulness means that because he is the truth, everything he says and does is absolutely certain. Everything he says and does, you can count on. It is absolutely uh, certain. It's 100% reliable 100% of the time. He does not fail, he does not forget, and he does not falter or change. You can trust God. What God says in his word, whether you understand it or not, whether you like it or not, is going to come true 100% of the time, every time, every time, because you can trust him. Lewis Sperry Chafer once said, He not only advances and confirms that which is true, in faithfulness abides by his promises and executes every threat or warning he has made. Whether you understand or, or understand God's timing or why he does what he does, what you read in the word of God, God will absolutely fulfill. That's the kind of God he is. What he says is what he means, and what he means he'll, he'll complete. Exodus 34, 6 says, that he is abounding in love and faithfulness. Deuteronomy 32, 4 says that he is a faithful God. Psalms 89, 2 says, For I have said, Mercy shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shall, uh, shall thou establish in the very heavens. Psalms 89, 8 says, O, o Lord God of hosts, who is a strong Lord like unto thee, or, or to thy faithfulness, round about thee. Psalms 89, 33 says that God 
uh, will never let his faithfulness fail. Over and over again, we're told of God's faithfulness. Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, shall, uh, hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall not make it good? Psalms, oh, that's Numbers 23, 19. John 17, 3 says, uh, tells us that God is the only true God. 1 Corinthians 1, 9 tells us that God is faithful. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, God is faithful. 1 John 1, 9 says, calls God faithful. 1 John 5, 20 says that God is true. Over and over again, we're told of the character of God, that he is faithful. He is true. You can count on him. He will never let us down. He, What he says, he means, and what he means, he does. He keeps his word because if he didn't, he would cease to be God. See, God does whatever he says. That's why we, we warn you about these false prophets out there who said they've heard a word from God. That Trump's going to be in the White House. That Trump's going to win this election. That Trump's going to do this or that. And uh, you know, and the fact is, is that they, because they said they heard from God, and uh, and God's right 100 percent of the time, that's showing us that they're these are uh, these are liars. They're false teachers, false prophets, and you shouldn't have anything to do with them. So why is it important that we remember uh, God's faithfulness? Why should we? know about God's faithful? Well, number one, uh, what he says he does, right? His word is eternal. You can trust his word. It says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Psalms 119.89. That means that once God said it, it was already a done deal. Number two, we need to remember that God is faithful because he has always been and always will be faithful. That is who he is. Psalms 119.90 says, Thy faithfulness is unto all generations. Thou hast established the earth, and it abideth. Psalms 119.90. Number three, he, God is faithful in all he does. Psalms 111.7 says, Thy works, the works of thy hands are, are verity and judgment. All his commandments are sure. Number four, we need to remember that God is faithful even when we're not. God is faithful even when we're not. It says in, in 2 Timothy 2.13, If we are faithless, he will remain faithful. Praise God. Number five, uh, we need to know about God's faithfulness because our salvation depends on God's faithfulness. We are saved apart from good works, and, we're, uh, and God saved us by his grace, and we're kept by his grace, and if we can't trust him, uh, then we're left in limbo wondering whether we're saved or not. But it says here, uh, Psalm, uh, Philippians 1, 6, it says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. What God says he does, he'll do, he has done. If God said he saved you, you are saved. We need to remember this because our sanctification uh, depends on God's faithfulness. Not only our salvation, but our, our, our sanctification. That, that's, that step by step uh, process of bringing us into the, uh, the conformity and the image of Jesus Christ. It says, Faithful is he who calleth you, who will also do it. God has called you that. And lastly, in this, in this portion of this message, uh, we need to. Uh, be reminded of God's faithfulness because our future resurrection depends on God's faithfulness. It says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with them. 1 Thessalonians 4.14 You know what? Our salvation depends on God's faithfulness. The Word of God declares His faithfulness. He is faithful even when we are faithless. Uh, our sanctification depends on him. Our future resurrection depends on God's faithfulness. If he is a fickle God, if he says one thing and does another, then he would cease to be God. All that God is 
and all that God does rests on his faithfulness. And every blessing we receive is because of God's uh, faithfulness to us to keep his promises. When he says it, he will do it. If God were not faithful, number one, we would never be saved. If it wasn't for God's faithfulness, we wouldn't be saved. And if it was, if God wasn't faithful, we wouldn't pray. Because what's the use in bringing our prayers to a God who, who knows about our issues and promises something that he doesn't keep? If it's not for God's promises, his faithfulness, we wouldn't be saved. If it wasn't for his faithfulness, we wouldn't pray. If, if it wasn't for God's uh, faithfulness, we would have no hope for for the future. If, if God did not prepare heaven, as Jesus said he was doing, he was going to prepare a place for us there in, in heaven, how could we be sure that we were going to get there? If, it, if God was not faithful, uh, we would go to our death desperately wanting to know if we were going to heaven or we're going to hell. Thank God for God's faithfulness. Even though we're faithless, he is faithful. Even though he is true, uh, even though we're, we're untrue, he is true. What he says, he, he means. He says that, he, that these are promises that we can know that we are truly saved. So why is it important for you and I to remember God's faithfulness? Because when we're discouraged, when life comes down upon us, when pressures come down upon us, we need to remember uh, God's faithfulness. That as God has been faithful to us in the past, he will be faithful to us now. And uh, we, we look back at uh, David and the shepherd boy who stood before the Goliath. And the Bible says that uh, in 1 Samuel 17, 37, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. Remember, he's standing before uh, for the before the king, uh, for, before King Saul, and and uh, and David remembers. He remembers how God provided for him in the past, how God protected him in the past, and he says, "There's no difference between this the lion. There's no difference between the bear. If the same God, if the, if God can deliver me from the lion and the bear, he can. How is this?" Philistine, this giant of a man over nine foot tall, this seasoned warrior, he's no different than the bear or the lion. My, no, no one stands in God's presence. And you and I need to remember, you and I need to remember God's faithfulness that as he provided for us in the past. Do you remember when God provided for you when you thought no one else in the world even knew what your issues and problems were? Do you remember when that check came in when you didn't expect it? Remember when you prayed and God provided the healing. Remember when you prayed and God provided the, your protection. Remember how God was always there. What's he saying here? As God was faithful in the past, he will be faithful now and he will be faithful in the future. We need to remember God's faithfulness when tough times come, when we, become, when we get discouraged. We can't let discouragement overwhelm us and drown out our our faith in our God. We need to remember God's faithfulness. Number two, we need to remember God's faithfulness when we doubt our salvation. And yes, doubt comes to all people. We look in scripture and we see how John the Baptist doubted and he wondered if, if Jesus was who he said, who he thought he was. And, uh, well, and Jesus said, Hey, remember to go back and tell John that, you know, I'm, I'm preaching to the poor, the blind receive their sight, the, the lame walk, and, and, uh, and, and, and so forth. Remind him who I am. You know what? We need to remind ourselves who God is when we doubt our salvation. Um, John 10, 28 says, I will give them eternal life. 1 John 5, 13 says, you may know that you have life. Why is this important? Because God promised that those who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, if you if you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ in Him, in Him alone, not a catechism, not a a, a ritualistic prayer, not a, a praying to uh, Mary or the saints or or selling uh, Watchtower magazines or any any number of things like that. No, 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 no. 
If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ in him alone, you believe that he, he in his death and his burial and his resurrection that, uh, that he paid your sin debt, that you are saved. God's faithfulness guarantees it. You cannot lose your salvation. You didn't lose, you didn't do anything to earn your salvation, and you certainly can't do anything to keep your salvation. It's all about God, as, as Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 tells us. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You don't earn your salvation, and you can't keep your salvation. It's all about God, and to him be glory. Amen. So we remember God's faithfulness when we're discouraged. We remember God's faithfulness when we doubt our salvation. And all, number three, we we remember God's faithfulness when we're tempted to sin. Second uh, Thessalonians three three says, "But the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and keep you from evil." First Corinthians ten thirteen tells us, "There hath no temptation taken you." But as such is common to man, but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that he uh, that ye may be able to bear it. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Notice that uh, it is, God doesn't remove the temptation, but he, he instills in us when we go to him and when we seek him. He is faithful to uh, keep us from falling if we choose to do what he asks us to do. To Maybe it's to remove ourselves from that temptation. Maybe it's to, to rebuke that temptation, get rid of it. I'm going to turn off that television. I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to walk away from that situation. God's faithfulness, if we depend on God's faithfulness, we can resist. Listen to this. Through Because of God's faithfulness and his promise to deliver us, we can resist every temptation. Will we? No. No. But the opportunity is there. We can rely on God's faithfulness to deliver us from every temptation. Number four, when we do sin, when we don't uh, rely on God's faithfulness, we can, uh, to, to, uh, to get us through that temptation, we can rely on God's temptation, uh, faithfulness to uh, to forgive us of our sins, we can rely on God's faithfulness to deliver us from our sins. First uh, John one nine says, "If we confess our sins, He is what's the word faithful. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness." God is faithful. His promises to you. His promise to you is that number one, He will save you. Number two, he will deliver you. Number three, he, he is going to, he will forgive you of your sins. When we fail, when we uh, falter, when we do things that we know we're sinful, and and he says if we confess, if we would, if we agree with him that what we've done is wrong, you not know, try to cover it up. We don't try to justify it. God, I've sinned. I've sinned again. Maybe this is the fifth or the hundredth time you come to him with the same sin. My Bible says, he doesn't put a condition there, does he? He says, when we do this, he does that. When we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Isn't that a great promise? Here's the truth. You need to remember that none of us have arrived. None of us are where we're going to be when we get to heaven. Until that time, you know, we're going to falter and fail. As a matter of fact, we're going to be human until the day we die. Because we're human, uh, we're going to uh, have struggles in this life that we don't necessarily uh, uh, desire to do, but because we're human, it's part of the human experience. It draws us close to God. It brings us close to God. It helps us not to look down on other people who are human as well. We are to confess our sins. We're not to hold it in. We're not to justify it. We're not to blame it on uh, someone else. We need to own up to our sin. It is my fault, God. I sinned. Please forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And the promise there, God is faithful to do that. Isn't that an amazing thing? As we said before, 
You did nothing to earn your salvation, and you can do nothing to keep your salvation. Works don't save you, but we have been called unto good works and to, and to live a life of holiness. And, uh, you know, that's a, it's a, none of us get to the point uh, where we don't sin. It's maybe a different uh, avenue of sin, but we still sin. I had a friend of mine uh, growing up, and uh, uh, my friend Brent, and uh, he, uh, his dad is a godly man, and he asked his dad one day, he said, you, you don't sin anymore, do you, dad? You don't sin anymore. And, and, um, and his father said, of course I sin. And, uh, and I think he went through and started saying, you know, what, uh, you know, well, I, I, you know, I, I start with here, I start with there. But the Brent is a young man, you know, those were, no, oh, those are nothing in comparison to what I struggle with, you know? And, uh, uh, Brent's dad was a, a godly man. He understood that, you know, you never get to the point where you don't sin. You know, maybe the major things in our life we've, uh, God has delivered us from, but in truth, the hidden things, the things of the, the mind and the speech and the other things, our attitudes, uh, take a lifetime to get out if we ever do. As long as we're living, uh, we're always sinning and we're always in need of God's forgiveness in our life. Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Not some, but all of them. Lastly, um, we need to remember God's faithfulness when we lack faith, when our faith becomes uh, weak, when we don't feel like we can take another step. Hebrews 10, 23 says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Hebrews 10, 23. What wonderful words these are to us. Uh, when we when we face moments where our, our faith is not that strong, when, when things look overwhelming, when we do get discouraged, when things, uh, when, when it's, uh, maybe we're tempted to, to give up, we need to hold fast profession of our faith without wavering because God is faithful. We can hold fast, not because, you know, I'm some sp uh, spiritual superstar. I'm, I'm, I can hold fast because I've memorized so many verses or I've done so many things for God. No, 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 no. If we hold fast without wavering, it's going to be because we believe and we've trusted that God, what God has said he will do. God is faithful even when we're faithless. Isn't that amazing? When we, when we, uh, when, uh, when we lack faith, we can go to God who, who, uh, who will not throw us out. He will hold us up and, uh, and continue to encourage us in, in the darkest of times. God is faithful. God is faithful. Friends, are you going through some tough times today? Are things not going right in your life? Are you having troubles in your marriage or maybe with your your parents or maybe with your with your children or troubles financially or with your health or any number of things the fact is is that we have a god who cares for us he has given us a great assurances of our salvation he's given us great assurances that he will never leave us nor nor forsake us my god is true your god is true we need to seek him we need to go to him we need to confess our need of him and ask him to reveal his presence in these situations that he will deliver us and and provide for us as as we have need amen we need to pray for that healing we need to pray for that that um um that uh you know our the financial uh means of getting out of the situation that we're in we need to pray for a new job we need to pray for deliverance for our our, our spouses our spouse or our children or whatever's going on in our life. God cares for you. So people say, I don't, I don't want to bring the little things to God. I don't want to pray. I don't, I don't want to pray about the little things. No, no, no. Everything's little to God. And so whether you're facing cancer or you're facing a, uh, a, 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 your tire being blown out or which tire you should buy for your new car or whatever else, everything is little to God. God cares about you and cares everything about you. You can bring it to God because he is faithful. Let me ask you today, have you put your faith in the faithful God? Have you trusted Jesus Christ as your savior? 
Why not pray and receive him as your savior today? My Bible says these things are written that you may know. You can have 100% assurance. You can be 100% assured that you're going to heaven by putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. To believe on him is to be saved. Why don't you pray and say, dear God, I believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God the Son, died on the cross for my sins. Please come into my life and save me now and save me forever. I repent of my sins and trust you today. Save me now, save me forever. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen? Amen. Let this be an encouragement to you. Remember that God loves you, and I love you as well. And I'll talk to you soon.